Well, hello, hello, hello. We're back again, back again for another Saturday workshop. And today I'm super excited because I have my friend Tori Edwards here. She's an accountant and I wanted her to come in and talk about, well, you know, the not so sexy part of doing business. <laughs> because let's face it, not everybody likes the numbers. And if you're here, I know that you guys are probably like, oh yeah, I need this, but not sure I want to be here, but I need it. But you do, you need it because if you don't know your numbers and you can say this, Tori, right? If you don't know your numbers, you don't know where you're at. You don't know where you're going and things just fall through the cracks. So she is really good at this. She has dealt with a lot of online businesses. And so she kind of knows the ins and outs of this. So I'm going to just kind of go through some questions and talk about a few things and then let her have it. But first off, I kind of wanted her to introduce herself and tell you a little bit about how she started in this online business. <laughs> well, thank you, Cindy. It is an honor to be asked. It is my um, um, true passion to help people understand their numbers and understand more than their numbers the importance of tracking your numbers. If I can make a difference in one online business owner's world, I, then you know I will consider that um, a success for me. But I am um, I'm an accountant. I've been an accountant for over 25 years. Gosh, I'm I'm probably approaching 30 years now. I'm just so used to saying over 25 years. Um, I have dabbled in several things. I um, I tried to get away from accounting and it always pulls you back in. And this is what I always teach my business owners. All right. Just talk to them, you know, uh, and give them a little bit of coaching is that, you know, you'll truly find what you're passionate about because it will speak very loudly. And when you don't listen, it will just keep coming back. And, you know, even when I tried to exit the space, you know, it'll come back in, in a different creative way. So now I get to do it. I get to pick the pieces that I really enjoy and I, and I keep those pieces and then the other pieces I just let go. I did taxes at one time. That wasn't my thing. I know enough to, um, I kind of, I can bridge that gap between your bookkeeper and your tax professional in saying, you know, like you're going to want to ask about this, like becoming an S corporation. Like I can't, um, help you sign up for that, but I can, I, or, um, make that election. It's an election. We won't get into the details because it's, I don't want to overwhelm you, but you know, I can say that here's some tax strategies that you might consider talking to your tax professional. And the one thing you'll learn is all tax professionals, all see all financial people. Um, if you ask them 10 questions, if you ask 10 different people, you'll get 10 different answers. There's not any one way to do things. Um, what I always tell people is interview get into a conversation with them it's you ultimately when someone's dealing with your numbers you want to trust them i mean because they're they're i mean it's like almost like you're taking off your clothes in front of them because you're opening up their books <laughs> and Girl, you're airing your dirty laundry and how you spend your money so you want to be able to trust them with your money you want to be able to trust them um to help you make good decisions. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll get a little bit into that, but um, just to, as far as my experience, I, I started I, I um, started in my college career to be um, a veterinarian. So I wanted to go to vet school and then I got into school and I was, or I, I worked in the veterinary, I, I worked as a, a tech in, in a veterinary clinic for many years. And I was like, oh yeah, those things have teeth and they don't always love you. and I'm going to go into medical school. So by the time I got to college, I was going to medical school. And then I got into like my first semester and I, I had chemistry and that was the death of me. I was like, mm, no, maybe this isn't for me. And so I was like, I, you had to take accounting. I don't know if you have to take accounting nowadays, but <clears throat> I had to take accounting. So I took accounting and I loved it. And so, you know, that's the path I took. So I was like, yes, please sign me up for that. I don't want to be in school for, you know, eight to 10 years becoming a doctor and so that's what I did and right out of college I got um, recruited into what was back then a top um, the big six accounting firm so there were six back then then Enron and all of those things and they consolidated data down to four um, but I went to work for KPMG as an auditor for um, several years then I went private and then I decided to um, that took me to Seattle and then I came back home 
Yeah, I love to see, I love Seattle. I mean, nothing's like home, Colorado is home for me. So um, things like the weather in Colorado. Um, but I didn't, I mean, I liked Seattle that it wasn't like cold, although it did snow and it shut down the city. And I was like, what is happening? Don't we have snow plows? No, Seattle doesn't have snow plows or they have one. I don't know. Um, so I came home and then um, decided I was, I was going to see if I was going to be a fi firefighter. And I went to school, EMT school. And in that process, um, I decided I would maybe become a paramedic, that becoming a firefighter, running into burning buildings was that right for my anxiety so i um um applied for paramedic school i got in and then decided i was done and i was ready to to, to start a family and i met my husband and so and then that's how it started and so i kept i worked for the ambulance company but got pulled into the after hours you know doing the books and that's how i kind of tie it in like it always finds you your passion always finds you no matter what what your passion is if you're listening it will rope you back in um so, so yeah so then i did that i always well, when i had my kids i didn't always i didn't always work full time i always kept um a few clients on the side to keep my skills relevant and then as they got as they grow up um you do tend to have a little bit more time <laughs> there's a short amount of time when you're doing toting them all over the place into play dates and all the things and then it then they start driving and they don't need you as much anymore and so you have more time and so i just i always kept myself relevant and then i just really leaned into the accounting space so that's kind yeah. of how i came to where i am at and it just kept pulling you back. It just kept pulling always, back. always. And no matter how many times I know, I just embrace it because I love numbers. I love data even more so than like the accounting piece. I love to analyze data. I love to look at, you know, spreadsheets of numbers and yeah. Oh wow! I mean, that's crazy. I had a friend um, at one point. She was one of my clients, and she uh, worked at a bank. And this is back when you know we had to do the the what do you call that? Register, you know, ledger, your, yeah. yeah. And so that's how you um, uh, reconciled your bank account. And mine never, I could never get it. And, you know, my business, I would have like page after page after page and there would be numbers off and it would drive me absolutely crazy. And I remember one time she goes, well, let me take a look at it. <laughs> like literally three pages. She goes like this, there it is right there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? How did you do that? She just literally scanned it for two seconds and found the error that I had been working on hours trying to. Yeah. So there are yeah. people, like I said, that can see numbers and you just see the beauty in it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and especially with my auditing background, those things always stand out. Like I always, when I first went into it, I'm like, well, how will you know if something, if somebody's like stealing money from the company and they're like, you'll, you'll know, you'll see it. It'll, it won't make sense. And all of a sudden it'll come together. And I'm like, oh, it does. Huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So with the online business, it is a little bit different. And I, I know that as an online entrepreneur, we have that shiny object syndrome a lot of times. And so, you know, you're, oh, I'm going to get involved in this. I'm getting involved in this. I'm getting involved in this. And by the end of the year, you kind of forget what you got involved in and what you threw away and what you still kept and you know how much money you put into this and how much money you put into that and then you're trying to get it together at the end of the year and it never works out really well it's usually very stressful and um yeah really bad but i want you to talk a little bit about that can you explain some of the most common tax obligations for digital and network marketers and how this maybe um is different than a traditional business? So, um, I mean, really, as far as the tracking side of things, it's all the same. And what the IRS will require of you is all the same. It's that you track your money. That's the number one thing is that they want the best business practice and the IRS, in order to be viewed in the IRS's eyes as a business owner, you must be a good steward of your money. So they want you to track your revenue and your expenses. They want you to report it and they want you um, to file timely estimated tax payments. So, I mean, that's all, the short answer. Um, the differences um, are just in like how you want to categorize it. I mean, the tax returns are no different for any type of business. It is um, it, most of your audience is probably like a C or 
Um, I mean, sorry, a Schedule C. So that just means that you're a 1099 employee or a 1099 worker, so contractor. So you um, file a Schedule C. Some may have EIN, some may not. Um, but the, um, so you just have to report that income on on a Schedule C. Um, so let's see. Let me see if I can tell me obligations. So I mean, the obligations are. Um, depending on where you're where you're at in your in your business, like if you're a first year, your obligations won't be the same as if you're a second or a, um, um, future or a subsequent um, year owner, because they want to see you pay your tax quarterly. Now you only have to pay taxes if you're making money, right? Like that, the beauty of having a business is you get these you get to deduct things, and there's as a business owner you get to deduct like home office expenses. Those are one of the more overlooked ones that um, can be a relatively big deduction um, on your tax return, and you don't have to do anything but have a space, a dedicated space. It's awesome, and then you get to take a percentage. Go ahead. Yeah, and you can also um, it's not just the space that you actually work in; it's actually where you store stuff for your business as well because i read right. that and when i was doing my taxes this year i was like oh well that's interesting i didn't realize that so i do have yeah. a whole closet area now i measured it so that i could get that extra little piece um yeah of a, yeah yeah so i mean i mean it's great and then you get to take so you basically, I mean, to sum up a home office deduction is you take the square footage of your house. So let's just do easy math. It's a thousand square feet and you use 250 square feet of it for your office. You get to take 25% of all of your expenses, your um, your um, mortgage interest, your electricity, your trash, your water, your HOA, your um, like um like if you if you own a home and, and say you do landscaping you get to, you know you pay somebody to come in or a cleaner you get to, you get to take 25 percent of that depending on the square footage it, the only stipulation in the irs's eyes is that it's it has to be solely used for business but we can all pretty much prove that these days i mean we all yeah. want a dedicated space so if you're using your kitchen table might be a little bit different but you can still take a portion uh, of it so I mean, I would always ask the tax professional that you have or, you know, like just make sure that you have documentation of, of how you come up to that number if you're filing for yourself. Right. Right. But yeah. I mean, that's for a home based business. That's amazing that you can do that, too. Oh, you're yeah. already paying those expenses, but you can take that as a deduction. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And your um your um your homeowner's insurance, um, if you have to pay renter's insurance, um, anything that you have to pay for your home. Now, if you put decorations or you paint the office, if you paint the dedicated space, that's 100% deductible. You don't have to apply that to the 25% rule. If you painted the whole house, then it's 25%. Um, now that's, I mean, then we kind of get into the nitty gritty of should you capitalize it or not so we won't get into that conversation but um most things you know like if you put um like a, a whiteboard or you know notebooks pens pencils calendars you know special mugs those are all 100 percent deductible so absolutely um, office, supplies. To mm -hmm. office supplies yep. yep supplies of doing business for sure and you know a lot of times i don't know if you guys know this but a lot of times we we overlook that you know we'll go and buy pens and pencils and paper and 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 we forget that we can deduct that because we're using it for our business so i mean how many of you have let that fall through the cracks right it's right and that's i guess i should back up when i was saying what the irs wants to see is that you know you treat your business as business and one of the things that you that will help you if you ever get caught in an audit is to have separate your business finances from your personal finances even if you're not able to fund it with <clears throat> excuse me fund it with um business money yet because you're overspending your outset your, your expenses are still higher than your your revenue you're not overspending some of us some sometimes it just takes a little while to kind of get that revenue up and going based on and, and you still have expenses but if you separate your business finances you can just deposit money in there and from your personal account and then spend your money from there that's what the irs wants to see and it is my 
number one tip for having less stress at the end of the year, because then all you have to do is go through one account or a, a checking account and a bank and a, and a credit card mm. um, versus digging through our Amazon accounts. Like how fun is that? Oh yeah. That's not fun. Especially no, because we all order off of Amazon and you, um, Amazon no longer makes it easy for because they did used to, you could download a spreadsheet all your transactions. So then I could just sort it and everything. And they took that away. I was like, curses. Oh no. So that means that you, because literally in one day you could order dog food and office supplies in one order. So how, you know, did, yeah. That's yeah. terrible. And I you have to go look it up because it's there's the detail isn't necessarily there. If they ship them together, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Exactly. So separating well, your business finances is will make your life easier. It it seems daunting as a new business owner. It seems like um too much to handle. You don't necessarily have to have a business account like per se, like a quote unquote what the bank would call a business account. If it's at least separate, that's better than nothing. That's better than, you know, because to get a business account, you have to have an EIN. So you have to be registered as an LLC. Um, and sometimes those those bank accounts come with fees if you don't have the minimum balance. So, I mean, you can weigh the pros and the cons, but it's um, it's better <laughs> mentally just to have one account instead of 10. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Or, yeah, or dipping into both and not, yeah. <laughs> And not well, because then you have to sort through it. So it's hard. It's hard. Or if you're going to have to sort through it, then you need to track it very well every month, probably more than once a month so that you don't forget. Probably daily, because if you're buying something on Amazon, are you going to remember next week what you bought at the same time you bought the dog food and the and the office and the paper for the office? No. Right. I mean, right. I don't remember what I bought yesterday. Right. Sometimes. So, <laughs> and it, talking about that, how do you handle like different, okay, multiple streams of income. That's kind of what everybody is doing now, all these multiple streams of income. So it could be like different, maybe MLM companies or different affiliate marketing kind of things. How do you handle something like that um, efficiently? And keep track of it. Yeah, <laughs> keep track of separate. it. Separate. Um, and in in that case, like, um, I mean, what I, I mean, I'm a big fan of automation, and I'm a big fan of software. But I've also been around. So if you're not, um, sometimes the software can can be time consuming to learn. And if you're going to dive into software, then you need to be using it more than once a year, more than twice a year, and more than four times a year, because you're going to forget every time I, you know, I had someone reach out and she was pulling her hair out and she's like, I have messed it all up. I'm just going to get my bank statements out. And I'm like, give me a second. And I went in and I was like, Oh, I can see exactly what she did wrong. And I went in and fixed it. And it took me like five minutes. And I'm like, go ahead you can throw your fit. But I fixed it. And you know, <laughs> Just she's like, I'm just so mad at myself, you know, for not doing it. And you have to give yourself grace and then learn from your mistakes and, you know, take action later. So what does software mean? It means you can use a spreadsheet. You can use um, a free software. Um, Wave is the free software. And it's not my favorite, but being an accountant, I'm used to a more robust system, but it does the job for, for small businesses. Um, there's like FreshBooks and there's like a bunch of other ones that, that'll, that'll um, sync up with uh, e-commerce stuff. Uh, QuickBooks is my favorite. That's what I work in and out of all day long. Um, but QuickBooks does have a yeah. fee. They do have a fee. QuickBooks um, has a fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. it's not it's not a huge fee. Is no, it? you could probably get it for less than 35 bucks a month. I mean, right. it's gone up over the years. I wouldn't suggest getting the um, self-employed because it's really made for just 